Hello, my name's Andrew Brooks. Thank you once again for joining my, my YouTube channel. This episode, it's part two of the three-way conversation between myself, John Heaton, and James Griffiths about Tug of War and Flaming Pie. But, but going back to off, off the ground, I mean, yeah, it's not fantastic, but because uh, the title track is a, a bad way to launch an album. But I mean, and when he did it in concert, I remember going to see McCartney on that 93 tour and my brother came along to one of the gigs. And then when he played off the ground uh, after it finished, he, he, he turned to me and said, well, that wasn't very good, was it? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. keep your hair on. Uh, anyway, but having said that, One Dark Open Sea, love it. Um, and uh, Peace in the Neighbourhood, love it. Okay, I don't like Come On People. Mm. I don't like, I hate um, Biker Like an Icon. Hope of Deliverance, what's your thought on that one? Yeah, I like, I like that. I yeah, like I love that. that, I love that. Um, yeah. Looking for Changes is a bit awkward, lyrically. Um, I mean, that's one thing that Flaming Pie has got in its favour, I think. I mean, I could be wrong about this, but there's no tracks on it, I don't think, that are genuinely bad. I mean, most McCartney albums have a couple of real stinkers, well, don't they? Well, they really so, love you. It's aimless, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's but not it's, even a song. Yeah, but it's not really bad, though. It's too nondescript to be really bad. It's not like Biker Like an Icon, which is almost offensively terrible. I mean, there's no, like, dreadful lyric or you'd think, oh, God, why did he record it? It's more just like, really? Is, is that really going to go on the album? But, yeah. but, it's not, but it's not dreadful. It's just a bit what just... What about Souvenir? What do you think to Souvenir? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, like it's quite it. like it. all right. Mm. I think, you personally, know, that, that could be one it could have been left off. Make it a bit shorter for you, John. You know, we could um, we could take Jeff Lynn. I think I know John had passed, but he he was the only guy post split. Actually, no, because George Martin might might qualify here. I was going to say the only guy to work with all four Beatles post split. Um, if Lennon counts with Three as a Bird and Real Love, which he doesn't mm. really, mm. Uh, but then George Martin. Uh, Produ helped produce all those years ago. Right, yeah. And, and he and he does a track on one of the Ringo albums. I think it's on um, Vertical Man or, or or Choose Love. I can't remember, but it, there's certainly a, a George Martin produced track from Ringo. So, but anyway, but the point I was going to make is you could do a compilation of Jeff Lynne produced Beatles, taking Cloud Nine, mm. Flaming Pie. Um, the tracks he produced on Time Takes Time, yeah, Free, yeah. Free as a Bird, Real Love. You yeah. know, you've virtually got a Beatles album there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we think to the title, Flaming Pie? Oh, clearly Nick from John's thing about the man coming down from the sky on a flaming pie and you will be Beatles with an A. What do we well, think of that? I think on one level, it was clearly opportunistic, wasn't it? Again, it was coming out of the Beatles anthology and, you know, McCartney wanting to connect back to the Beatles legend. So he knew it would be a reference that Beatles fans, you know, got immediately. Um, I don't know whether it's a great name for an album, really. I mean, any album called Something Pie. I, I, don't, I don't know if that works particularly. You know, it's a good, it's a good fun song. I remember him doing it. Didn't he do it on TFI Friday? Um, Chris Evans. I think that's where I first heard him do that track. Awesome. Um, and it's got that sort of, it's got that piano, it's got the Fats Domino style piano, isn't it? Or the whatever it is, you know, the mm -hmm. sort of Lady Madonna style boogie woogie thing. And um, it's clearly meant to be, you know, the title, the style of the song, everything about it is meant to just scream Beatles. It's kind yeah. of, you know. And, and it had um, the little logo that appeared on everything from guitar picks to the you know, yeah. back of the album to, you know, the little flaming pie. So. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a better title than Off the Ground. <laughs> um, yeah. And, be and a better title than Give My Regards to Broad Street. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's not his best album title, is it? I mean, Back to the Egg is probably my favourite uh, mm. title out of all of them, I think. Mm. Venus and Mars is pretty cool. Band on the Run. Mm. A few good ones. I guess we should also talk about the album cover. I mean, if we look at the um, just the magnificence of the yeah 
took a war cover and then i mean this is, is i guess it's got its charm to it and it, it's nothing like as bad as the driving rain cover is it um <laughs> but i guess it, it's just that thing it seems to sort of speak of a lack of confidence in a way it just seems such a grainy kind of photo whereas mm. that one he, he just looks like such a cool guy there doesn't he i don't know what do you think well i, yeah. I always for me tug of war i always thought of here today as if he's listening to I don't know, he's on his own just listening to John or something like that. Maybe. Really, that's how I sort of pictured the album. Why, when I looked at the, 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 the album cover after, when I was listening to the, the, the songs, mm. and I, that's how I envisaged it. And I, I'm, I'm guessing Flaming Pie, you know, he's, he's using some of Linda's um, techniques that, she, you know, she obviously taken these pictures and she was experimenting with lots of different techniques at that point or yeah. had, had to up to that point. And, um, that was something different again a different style of photography but um i guess it's got that sort of autumnal feel to it hasn't it which mm. runs through the album you know musically um and of course you've got the little flaming pie graphic there <laughs> little yeah. red graphic. Think, well, it, it looks nicer on vinyl than it does on cd I and mean, uh yeah if you blow it up it, it's it more of an art piece of artwork i think yeah Okay. Okay. Yeah. Going back to tug of War, Andrew. The, the painting behind the the painting behind the photograph on Tug of War is that one who who did the painting and two is that still in the in the reception I, area I, of I, I can't tell you who did the painting, but I can tell you it's still in the reception area. It's on actually on the staircase going up from reception to the first floor at MPL, and it's huge, right. absolutely huge. Um, the painting itself. So, so it's that on one side, and then the Uwe Le Sole artwork on the other side. You've got that. You've also got the um, the armchair from Memory Almost Full in the uh, foyer as well. So it's like a little collection of uh, album covers. Was that was that a painting or just? No, a... it's a it's a it's a real armchair, and obviously. Oh, it's... the real armchair is the just real there. armchair. Yeah, in the foyer, you can go and sit and then, in. And, in. and then just to complete the trivia for you, James. I think in the third floor window, Andrew, you were telling me you could see the the angel from the cover of Wings Greatest. Se second floor window, which is McCartney's office, <laughs> in the window itself, you can see the statue, and it's only like 12 inches high in, in the window itself. You mean uh, that you can see it from the street? If you yeah, look up, you can... Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> and they I might just go there out. now and have a look. <laughs> yeah, they flew that out to wherever the, the Wings Greatest... Um, uh, album cover wouldn't, was taken. It, wouldn't it be great if they just released you know like they like the, they released the doctor who figurines james mm. why the hell can't they release like things like that it'd be a captive audience well you've got you've got george's gnomes you could have paul's little statue yeah <laughs> but you shouldn't have to pay a thousand dollars right <laughs> Yeah. There's that um, famous story, isn't there, that he flew it all the way up to um, was it Switzerland yeah, in order to yeah some mountain right I forget where the mountain was but yeah just to film it in the snow and when you look at the cover it doesn't scream out Switzerland it just looks like maybe he's just a studio just, just, yeah he's, he just <laughs> tips some flour over it or something you know but it, Which, it certainly looks bigger in the photo on Wings Greatest than it is in mm. yeah it's, it's probably almost life size if you've got the album cover. It's probably about that size, the actual statue. Yeah, itself. small. What if we were to um, do a little deep dive into um, some of the Tug of War tracks? Yeah, okay. Any, any standouts for you, James? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> one of the things I love about this album is not, I mean, I do like the songs, but I just love the arrangements. So there are certain um moments in the songs which just really do give me goosebumps i'm thinking of in um ballroom dancing when it all goes down it sort of goes down into this it, it kind of breaks down doesn't it in the middle yeah yeah a kind of swampy thing with all you know bass riffs and everything and then builds back up again into the main part of the song i love that i mean I, i'm assuming it's george martin um and the pound is sinking I think that, I mean, that's probably one of my top 10 favorite ever Paul McCartney yeah, tracks. I, I, I like the pound of sinking. I, 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 yeah. But it's so clearly four different songs stitched together that, yeah. I mean, I play that song to people who, who may be a little bit agnostic about McCartney as in they don't necessarily like McCartney, 
and they just look at me like what like it's just obviously just four bits that have been st stuck together you know and yeah. you have to agree with that it's it, it it clearly is but i don't know if it was george martin who did it or it was mccartney but they just work so well together so mm. fantastic why well. would they why would they say that just sounds like songs stitched together for that track yet yeah, band yeah. on the run people just accept it for it is you know a great yeah, track. i know and it's four, i don't know three or four i don't know stitched together again yeah, yeah. I mean, are you two both in agreement about the pound is sinking? I mean, I've always, I've always really rated that song for, for some me, reason. For me, the thing I love about it now is mm. it mentions all those currencies that are no longer here. True. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I know. I mean, for McCartney, it's actually a very good lyric. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have a big, deep, and meaningful meaning to it, but you can grasp it. It's some kind of metaphor, isn't it? It's some kind of uh, yeah. I was, hoping, I was hoping he'd talk about it in the book, but he didn't. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just the sound of the coin, you know, spinning. Yeah, it's just, just which fantastic. then goes into the next track. It's another yes, one of those links. It goes into um, what is it, Wonderland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, you've got all the stuff on Take It Away, you know, all the really, the, you know, the big horn section and just those amazing vocal harmonies, just banks and banks of them. I mean, I, I really love the Eric Stewart kind of vocal sound. You can definitely hear his voice in there. But don't you think and, um, it sounds better with proper brass instruments, not rather than Wix's little, you know, Oh, yeah, yeah of course. It, it sounds yeah. like when you watch the 76 tour and he's got Howie Casey and the, the, the boys... Oh it's it's phenomenal and then you switch to yeah uh one of the, the later tours when, when all yeah. it is, is wicks just playing it on a keyboard it's yeah it's no around. comparison no comparison yeah i've always yeah. liked dress dress me up as a robber yeah as a song which, it always amazes me when i look at the at the cd thing to see how long the track is it always stuns me that it's so short because yeah. so much happens in that song that's that one of the ones he actually talks about in the lyrics book Right. And he's actually listed it as a B-side. I don't recall wow. it ever being a B-side. No. Because it was memory, he, of, he said it was on the B-side of Take It Away. His memory really has gone to pot, hasn't it? <laughs> I, I'll Give You a Ring was on the B-side of Take It Away. That's it, yeah. And Tug of War had... Um, um, I can't think what it had on the B-side. Get It, was it? Get it? I think it was Get It, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he'd intended it to be the B-side. I mean, you never know. I mean, so many years yeah. ago, maybe he'd thought of it as being a B-side, but so much happens in the song. It seems like in my mind, it's like a track, which is maybe like four minutes long, you know, and then it's, it's about two and a half minutes, if that. Yeah. So much stuff packed in there, hooks on well, hooks. He, on and, hooks. I think, and I think that it's continuing on from the experimentation that had been on McCartney too, but it, it, I think it works better because he spent more time perfecting the sound. And obviously he's got George Martin helping. He's got Danny Lane on the track as well. Yeah. So there's there's no there's nothing on Tug of War which sounds unfinished, whereas you could say that about McCartney too. Some mm. of it is a bit bare bones. Well, he, he's, he says that it's actually a love song in disguise. The whole thing's all about disguises. You can dress me up as this, you can dress me up as that, but I'm still the same person underneath. And, and that's what he was referring to in the book. He talks about... Um, back in the in the Beatles days, when you know you can dress me up as you know as this, you can dress, but I'm still Beatle Paul, you know Sergeant Pepper suit, I'm still Beatle Paul, and you know, it, and that's basically what he's saying. It's a love song in disguise. So if you actually listen to the words, it, mm. even though it's quite a rocky love song, it is a love song at the end of the day. But as I say, he reckons it was a B side, but we all know he's wrong. I quite, I quite like the fact <laughs> that he's doing falsetto. Because he, he doesn't do that very often in his, in his career. I can think of Girlfriend from London Town and So Bad from Pipes of Peace off the top of my head. Are there any others out there you can think of um, where he does falsetto? Not really. Not without going through all the albums. And well, there's, um, you know, the bit on Uncle Albert. The, Give a little. Get a little. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of a little bit falsetto -y on Arrow Through Me. It's, it's not full falsetto, but there's a slight soul, soul like mm. vibe on that track. Yeah. I mean, I've got to say, I think I think Tug of War is maybe McCartney's vocal peak in a way. I mean, it, it, his vocals are not as good on Pipes of Peace, and then they're not as good again on Press to Play. I think um, 
he'd come out of wings, I think, and all that live work must have really got his voice into shape. And to me, he goes into Tug of War doing some of his best ever singing. I mean, that bit in um, the pound is uh, the pound is sinking. You know, the bit where he sings. Um, oh, it, uh, what's the big bit in? the pound is sinking it's a really big emotional bit to, you know towards oh, the end. Hear, me, hear me my lover yeah, yeah 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 and he really really goes for it he belts it out and his voice just sounds absolutely fantastic you know I, I, the one track which i think he doesn't do such a good job on vocally is the stevie wonder one is um what's that you're doing i was just I think, that was my next question about what yeah, you're doing yeah maybe maybe it's because stevie does such a great job and it's almost like mccartney's holding something back he doesn't really let rip he's mm. he sounds like he's sort of thinks he's singing a little pop song whereas stevie wonder is trying to do it like a proper funky you know yeah and it's a sort of a you know a call and return is as well going on isn't there yeah, yeah. so he's i think he gets upstaged um mm. But again, was that just the, was significantly that, in that song? But again, was that just a, a jamming session that you know carried on and then got included included on the album? You know, yeah. I mean, it's too long, isn't it? That track. I don't know. How long, long it, yeah, it goes, it on, goes on a minute too long. Mm. Yeah, but it's good. It's still a good track. It's not something that you'd be ashamed of. It's, it's still it's still an impressive bit of work. I mean, it's just the two of them as well, which I think is amazing. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how they did it, whether it's a live drum kit. I think Paul is credited with drums, but I'm not sure whether that just meant he programmed the drum machine or whether he did some live drums, but really amazing sort of bass drum interplay on that one. Yeah. Wasn't there a, a story going around that Denny Lane said that uh, Stevie Wonder was listening to a, an early playback of that song and and said something like, "Who, who who's playing those awful drums?" <laughs> I could, I, I, the, story, the version I heard was that, know that. Paul, that Paul was in the studio, just sort of drumming, and obviously Stevie comes in and can't see who's drumming, obviously, but just sort of joins in on the on the the keyboards and just sort of a bit of jamming, and then. Paul stops and leaves the studio and uh, talks to, and then Stevie talks to someone in the control room where Paul is now in the control room and go, well, that was a shit drummer. Who was that? <laughs> <laughs> you think Stevie Wonder would be more tactful, wouldn't you? I mean, given that, <laughs> given that he's blind, I mean, there's so many opportunities to put your foot in it in that kind of situation. <laughs> the things you get away with when you're blind. Well, <laughs> So anyway, what else then? So what, I even the love, last... I even love be yes. I mean that's a fantastic track. I was just going to say briefly. I I even love be what you see. Link. I mean, mm. it's, I mean, there's nothing to it really. It's just just you know just a link. It's a link but, from get it. Very successfully links. Dress me up as a robber yeah. to Ivory. Yeah, yeah. It's, ju it's, ju it's just masterful. I, I mean, again, I suspect that George Martin may have had something to do with how great it sounds. You know, and was it was it a fragment of a longer song maybe that you know, ended up not being recorded and they just lifted one little bit out of it and used it as a link. I'm inclined to think that probably was the case, but I, you know, I don't you know. If, if, it, if it was now, because Paul reckons he records lots of things on his little iPhone recorder, yeah. would it would it have been something, you know, he's in a studio and he's got this keyboard and he's synth and he's just doing, you know, be what you see. Oh, yeah. right, we'll, just, we'll just hang on to that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Hang on to it. And then they've just yeah. found the perfect little slot for it. Yeah, but what I was, would be what you see the B side of ballroom dancing. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry, a, my memory's going that, as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it was uh, if it was McCartney's little tip of the hat to Jeff Lynne. I don't know if he was, you know, all the Vakoda stuff on Out of the Blue, all the yeah. you know, please turn me over and all that kind of stuff. You know, I wonder if that was him. Yeah. Well, little... certainly the the earliest time I can remember Paul using it. Obviously, uh, yeah, out of the blue predates it by five years. So mm. Mm. Um, interesting. Yeah. But yeah, Wonderlust is just absolutely magnificent. It's a, it's, a, it's a lovely song. Lovely song. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, I could really imagine being in the studio when he was recording that. You know, being an engineer or being, you know, even the person making the tea. You know, and hearing that and thinking, bloody hell, you know, McCartney's certainly got his mojo working again now with that one. I mean, but it again, could easily. Why? Why not do it in concert? 
you know, after all these well, years, and, you know. And why not include it in the, the lyrics book? It's not included, right? No, no. It could be unbelievable. I mean, it, this is this is an opportunity to reintroduce this song to not that the younger generation are buying the book. So maybe it's not reintroducing anything, but uh, if he wants to get it, give it more oxygen, mm. or maybe he doesn't feel it's one of his best, or maybe he, he's embarrassed with the drug connection. Well, they, you see, they, they could have done it. They, he could have included it if he wanted it with the younger generation, because there is Spotify. Uh, McCartney's um, people have put out a Spotify playlist of every single song that's in the book. So you've got the playlist and you can sit there and you can read about it as you listen to it. If you want, if you wanted it out there, you should have included it. And then he could have, you know, put it on this playlist that, that people listen to, but you know, is it on the um, pure McCartney compilation? Wonderlust. I would, I would not. I'll, I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. Would you like me to check? <laughs> Just quickly, if you don't mind. <laughs> it was um, it was on Broad Street, wasn't it? It was one of the tracks that was re-recorded. Yeah. Or am I just completely imagining? It was one of the yeah. pointless re-recording. Well, not, <laughs> quite, not quite so pointless, because at least it was only two years old. Yeah. Is, is it less pointless than um, revisiting the Revolver tracks, which I just oh. felt was pretty desperate um, mm. in, in an attempt to make the film commercially successful let's let's throw a few Beatles songs in yeah it's on there side seven. Oh, it is good yeah 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 oh well yeah and what, what, what else, just while you're there andrew what, yes. what else from tug of war is on there okay let's have a look so um the first disc uh, nothing second disc nothing um ebony and ivory on side four is the first one um that's good night tonight, but that's um, pipes of peace. Well, tonight. Oh, we've got here today, obviously, which then goes into Wonderlust, um, and that's it. That's 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 your lot. Three You're tracks. Not, not very well represented, is it? No. What about uh, what about the Carl Perkins track? What about Get It? Again, I think that's just a, a little jam in a session session in the studio, and Paul's recorded it for Prostera, You know, just because he was there and he needed. He wanted yeah. it uh, just a, as a memory, and uh, and it mm. turned up on the album, I think. Yeah, I mean, I've always loved it. Again, I mean, when I heard it back in, you know, whenever it was, I had no idea who Carl Perkins was. It was just some <laughs> some strange some voice on a record. So, yeah, it's just, <laughs> but um, it's so infectious, and just the way he breaks into laughter at the end. And again, yeah. it's so incredible the way that the laugh goes into it, uh, into um, be what you see. I mean, it yeah. shouldn't work. Carl Perkins sort of chuckling hoarsely yeah. seg segueing into this vocoder kind of sound it's like how on earth did they get that to work <laughs> I, uh, think how do they even... I, I think in the uh, archive set they actually talk about the joke I, I don't ask me what the joke was it was the joke that paul told carl perkins yeah uh, that made him laugh and then it was recorded Fantastic. What, what was the joke do we know I, I, without getting the book down and going through it, which I'm not going to do, John. <laughs> yeah, I, we I, reckon, I reckon it's not. It wouldn't be politically correct. That's no, probably yes. No, maybe. But, uh... <laughs> we, were, we were talking about um, London Town earlier, and to me, Get It always reminds me of Name and Address from London Town, which, again, does occupy a very similar place on the album. It's on side two just before the final set of tracks, isn't it? You know, name and address is, I think it's third from the end, isn't it, on London Town? And Get It is third from the end on this album, actually. It's exactly, you know, the same kind of retro rock and roll kind of sound. Yeah, Elvis yeah. Presley, Elvis on London Town. This is more, you know, Carl Perkins. But, well, you know, Carl Perkins similar. did write Blue Suede Shoes, so there's your, there's your connection. Yeah, yeah. And it shouldn't work again because the rest of the album is so um, kind of orchestral and classical sounding and, and that track is so rootsy and... But, it, but again, it just works amazingly well, you know. I do think, I do think as an album, I mean, I guess we need to, at some point, we keep sort of skirting around it a little bit, we need to actually say, is it Flaming Pie or is it Tug of War? Because that's sort of the idea of the video, isn't it? Versus, it is, and, we, and we've got which, to wrap it up because the time which, is sticking on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, which, which one are you going to take to the desert island? That's the question. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm fairly certain in my mind which, which it is for me. For you, know, but... okay. Um, for me, I'll go. I'm going to go with tug of war. Okay, 
I, I just think it's a lovely polished album and there are some good tracks on Flaming Pie, but it could be that it's just nostalgic for me for, for many reasons, tug of war. And I know it, as you say, you know it back to front, backwards, inside out. And I probably haven't played Flaming Pie half as many times mm. as I've ever played tug of war. So yeah, yeah. for me, it's tug of war vote. Mm. Well, I totally agree with you then, Andrew, because I mean, that's exactly my perception. And it's interesting the way that you said that, you know, we know Tug of War so well because we've heard it a million times. And yet it's still the record we would take to the Desert Island, even though really it's Flaming Pie we should take because that's the one that we need to get to know better. <laughs> but we'd still take Tug of War. And I guess it is the nostalgic thing. But I think as well, I think as an album, it's more of a piece. It's got more of a flow. It's an I old think. friend at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I often am coloured, my opinion is often coloured by the strength of the opening track and um, Tug of War just wins that hands down. I think the songs we were singing is decent, but it's crying out for some kind of middle eight. It's yeah. too repetitive. It lasts too long. Uh, we mentioned If You Wanna is on track three, so it's not off to a brilliant start, Flaming Pie. But having said that, that we didn't talk about it, but some days it's just an absolute masterpiece. Mm. Uh, Little Willow, the same, and Beautiful Night. Three, three of his best ever ballads. Calico Skies, which thankfully he does yeah. do live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, would you say would you say all of those tracks are better than there's one track we haven't talked about in Tugger War, and that's Somebody Who Cares, which I guess is the most acoustic song, isn't it? It's the acoustic guitar, the Spanish guitar. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm inclined to say that I think Calico Skies is a better song than Somebody Who Cares. I think it's got more emotional resonance to it. The lyric of S -S Somebody Who Cares never quite convinced me. This idea of him singing about, you know, it's like someone's taken the wheel off your car when you had somewhere to go. It's, yeah. it's a bit fast. It's a bit facile, isn't it? It's a bit like, well, I guess I just get the spare tire out of the boot and jack it up and put it on, you know. It's not. I suppose it's better than acting like a dustbin lid. I'm fond of that. I, I quite like that. Ever since I discovered that it was a piece of Scouse... Uh, well, it's Cockney no. rhyming slang. Cockney uh, rhyming, yeah. yeah oh, I thought, it was, no, I thought it was a Scouse thing. I thought, it was a, I thought it was a Liverpool thing. No, it's a Cockney rhyming slang for oh. kid. So, yeah, okay. The source, the Which makes it source slightly thing. more d defendable when you, when you know that, but only slightly. <laughs> I still it's, wouldn't it's, have put that lyric it's, in. It's, it's, it's like our, our, our mutual friend Sam he was unaware that Puppy Dog's Tales on um, Once Upon a Long Ago refers to the wigs that lawyers and oh, judges oh. wear. Oh, yeah. Good point. Not, mm. I, I hadn't connected that. Yeah, Puppy Dog's Tales in the House of Lords. And, yeah, it's yeah. so go, going back to the, the Battle of the Ballads. Um, I would, <laughs> oh, yeah, I sorry. Say, I would say Some Days comes in as the runner-up of both albums and Wonderlust comes in as the winner. Hmm. from well, either in in yeah. the lyrics book he, he he talks about some days as um when you're in a relationship and you're looking into the other person's soul to try and understand them and invariably you fail hmm. and that's how he describes it in the in the in the book so uh yeah it's, it's interesting when you do actually get to hear the stories of some of the tracks and you just wish that he'd have and, and done more it's heartbreaking when you know that he wrote some days you know when linda was not to be long with us mm. Um, mm. yes yeah. and like calico skies would you believe is actually about star signs it's mm. all about fate and how he he doesn't actually believe in star signs but he's a gemini he's halfway in through the year so he's sort of torn in two different directions and it's all about fate and how they avoided the call up um, for national service. I think I might have to get. I think I might have to get this book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still available. They still make it. Yeah, yeah. So, John, are you are you saying that you're flaming uh, that you're um, tug of war then to the desert? Yeah, night? as an album, I, I'm going to put tug of war ahead of flaming pie. Yeah, I, yeah. I have reservations of, with tug of war in that take it away is not my favourite single the the video is highly annoying <laughs> what point what you... <laughs> is highly annoying? no i love no don't get me wrong i love the first minute of the video when they're in the living room 
But then when they get to the John Hurt stage and the driving the lorry and the big audience bit at the end, oh, geez. I like all that. Well, I like, I like I guess, the video. I guess <laughs> you were 11 at the time, James, so it must have been, you know, you were a very impressionable age. That's fine. <laughs> I was 18 and I thought the whole thing was a bit schmaltzy. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I, I prefer it to Tug of War video where he's just nicked the the black and white footage from what is it um, Metropolis or whatever film it is. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know what would be the new video for that track? That um, have you guys watched the Thai big hit on Netflix um, with the game show where everyone gets murdered? Oh, so uh, yes, uh, Squid Games. Yeah, so the tug of war episode. Have you watched the tug of war episode yet? Have you got to that yes. one yet? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. That would be a, make a good video for the song. <laughs> Probably not showable. Have you, have you seen it, James? No, um, I haven't seen it. No, no, but it sounds like a good idea. It, it's pretty gruesome stuff, but yeah. it's uh, it's pretty um, compulsive viewing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, guys, um, I think we've rambled on long enough. Um, so uh, the, the vote is tug of war unanimously um, going mm. to the desert island. Um, yeah, I did. I did predict that. I did think that it was likely that we would uh, emerge with that verdict. So, yeah. um, uh, but you're right that you know maybe we we do need to sort of listen to other albums a little bit more than than mm. we do. You know, stick on when you're going to get the urge to play tug of war. Stick on flaming pie instead. Mm. Yeah, well, I might give it another listen tonight because it's interesting. In preparation for this video, I listened to Tug of War twice and Flaming Pie once. So again, right. it makes no sense because because I know Tug of War back to front. I don't even need to listen to it in order to know it. But it was still that one I listened to twice and Flaming Pie once. So yeah, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Yeah. You you, you know you gravitate towards the one which is the the comfort blanket, I guess. Yeah, the old yeah. friend. Mm. Okay, guys. Well, it's a uh... friend called my old friend. Um... With, with Carl Perkins singing, wasn't there an outtake from these sessions, the tug of war? So yeah. Um, and, uh, I think that made Paul get emotional because that was the last thing that Lennon had said to him think, when they think, saw each other last yeah. in 76, think of me. Every once, now and again. Well, yeah, 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 one, yeah. One, once or, yeah, whenever. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. All right, well, it's and we didn't even talk about here today. <laughs> oh. Well, it's a, it's a masterpiece. It, it, it was, it is, it will be very moving. Yeah, Probably I mean... It's the best it, tribute to John out of all of them, I think. Yeah, he says it is a love song to John. But really, if you, look, if you, if you just take that as in your own world, it is a love song to, to anyone, really. It doesn't even have to be to, about John. It can be about anyone. Mm. Which, uh, I, th I think it's a nice different angle I hadn't really thought about it until I read the lyrics again and I thought well, actually you could work that into your own life really you know mm. but no you're right John it is a, a it is probably the 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 tribute yeah for, for John we also didn't mention Great Day did we on Flaming Pie did we talk about that no, I don't think we did. Uh, I, I think I dismissed it. Oh, did you? Fair <laughs> enough. He said it's a thankful song in the lyric book. He says it's I quite like, like it. I quite like it. He, was, he sits there at the table and the kids are doing their homework or they're doing their, you know, whatever, and he's just thankful that he's there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's better than rinse the raindrops. Oh, God. Well, there you go. You see, talking about driving rain again. Well, then. nod your head. <laughs> it's better than nod your head. <laughs> uh, right guys well it's uh it's been a fun chat it's been a while since we've done one of these and we'll do we will do another one of these um sometime soon maybe we'll get a, um someone to suggest two albums that maybe we could mm. have a look at um yeah so if someone's uh if someone thinks oh yeah i want to hear these three guys just ramble on for an hour or so about two albums let us know and we'll uh and we'll, we'll dig it out but john thanks a lot um All right. I'll, I'll put links into your channel in, in throughout the video and at the bottom down here somewhere and uh, same with yours james as well I'll put some links to your channel and uh, yeah thanks andrew all right no worries well Good guys night. um see you later have a, have a nice christmas <laughs> yeah thanks a lot uh, everyone and uh it's been it's been fun fun hour and however many minutes we've been rambling on and uh we'll do it all again real soon 
Take care. Right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little conversation about Tug of War and Flaming Pie. And uh, as you can see, we all agreed that we would take Tug of War to the desert island with us forevermore. When really, because we know all the songs off by heart, we should be taking Flaming Pie and, uh, and listening to that more and more and more. Thank you very much for watching. Um, up here now is a link to John and James's channels. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I'll see you next time.